Hey guys, Michael with Quiet Lawn here. Hope you're doing well. Uh, the topic of this video and this series, this is part one, is how I work in my business less than one hour a week uh, on average. So there's a lot of things I haven't figured out in business. There's a lot of things that we're constantly evolving and learning and trying to improve with our business. Um, one thing I think that we've done exceptionally well is put systems in place to automate my business. Um, even at the small size that we still are, um, I've basically been out of the field for, you know, since we were under 300,000 in revenue. Aside from random occasions when you have to get back in there, or train somebody, or, uh, you know, maybe getting out in the field. But um, right now we're about a half a million dollar company. And as far as working in the business, I haven't had, aside from going out and training one of my managers for a few hours, a couple days, um, I haven't had to mow any yard this year. I haven't had to treat a yard. Uh, the only mulch jobs I did was to train uh, one of my guys to do mulch, you know, but I haven't had to do any of that stuff, trim shrubs, uh, anything actually out in the field. You know, the reason is that we put a lot of stuff into place to automate that and get me out of that role. Before I get into the details on, you know, everything we did and how we, we started that process, I first want to talk about the why. Why did I wanted this type of business? Because, uh, you know, there's a lot of guys that are our size or much bigger, many multiples bigger, and they work in their business all the time. They're, you know, they're still stuck in their business. They're not to this point, either by choice or they just don't have those systems in place. So I think I can offer some good insight on how you can start that process. If that is your desire, you know, to have your business run itself, um, you know, I think I can offer some good insight on that. If you don't, if you like working out in the field or if you like being involved in your business heavily, some people do. My buddy Freddie really enjoys being in his business. Uh, more power to you. Uh, I'm just not that type of person and that's not why I got into this industry. First off, why did I want to do this? Let me give some backstory about my history uh, and kind of where I came from. I was always a very hard worker. Um, I started mowing yards when I was 10 or 11. I typed out business cards on a typewriter because we didn't have a computer. This was in the 90s. They had computers. We just couldn't afford one. Uh, so I had a little typewriter and I typed out business cards when I was like in sixth grade uh, saying that I would mow any size yard for $20. We still have one of those business cards, which is very cool. I cut each one out with like a scissors, you know, it was a, you know, typed them out one at a time. It was a, you know, quite a, quite a process. So I started mowing grass uh, for money when I was in sixth grade. Um, I got a real job. Uh, I still continue to mow yards. My dad would like drive me around cause I couldn't drive. He would drive me and drop me off and then come back and give me a few later, a few hours later. Um, when I was 14, I lied and said I was 15 to get a real job. I worked throughout high school mowing yards and also had a job, you know, to deliver pizzas or whatever. I was working full time. So I've been working from a very young age. I had a very good work ethic. My parents both worked hard and they instilled that work ethic in me. When I was in my twenties is when I worked the hardest of all. And, and, and it sounds uh, weird. It sounds crazy, but it was intentional. Uh, I wanted to see how hard I, you know, you'd always hear these things that people say, you know, you need to rest, you need to take time off, your body's got to recover. Um, and it was kind of a personal test. I wanted to see if that was really true. So there was probably a five or six year period where I literally worked seven days a week. Um, and when I say seven days a week, like there was a two year stretch where I didn't even take Christmas off or any day, like literally 365 days a year um, that I worked. In my early 20s, I was, uh, I was uh, remodeling properties. I was re uh, building a cabin for someone and also remodeling a triplex by myself, you know, tearing the whole thing out, rebuilding it, doing that, you know, all the electrical, all the plumbing to all the way to the finish work. Um, I would do that throughout the week. I'd work 10 or 12 hours a day. And then I volunteered at a zoo because uh, that was a passion of mine. Um, and I would volunteer on my weekends, Saturday and Sunday, and I'd work 10 plus, 10, 12 plus hours a day uh, doing that. And I did that, like I said, literally for over two years without a day off, um, just because I wanted to see if I could do it. After that, got into the casino industry uh, and I was a manager at a casino and I would work evening or a graveyard shift. I would go in, you know, three, four, five o'clock in the afternoon. 
I would work till one, two, three, four o'clock in the morning. Uh, I would get home. I would sleep till probably seven or eight in the morning. And then I would wake up and I had a lawn care business also and a handyman business. And I would get up and work all day uh, until I had to go back to work at night. Uh, I was also remodeling my house and a duplex that I owned at that time. And, you know, I would, when I say I was working seven days a week, I would work throughout the week with my job. And then I'd be working, you know, 14, 16, 18 hours a day when I got off. Um, and seven days a week, you know, not only was I working my full-time job, but most of those days I was doubling up and I was either working at my business or remodeling that property. So, you know, I, I, I had a good work ethic. Work didn't bother me. Uh, I was doing pretty well financially in my 20s. I had rental property. Um, I had a very good paying job with benefits. Uh, I had my business that was generating good money on the side. I had a couple of part-time employees and my expenses were very low. Um, I, you know, I was, I've always been a big uh, believer in keeping your, uh, you know, not trying to keep up with the Joneses and, keep, Joneses and keeping your living expenses down. I was driving a $500 truck that I still drive. Looks terrible, but I love that truck. I was buying all my clothes from Goodwill, you know, doing all this stuff to, uh, you know, to acquire more money. I had a, had a good amount of money and I had a good amount of money saved. And my living expenses were very low considering my job income, uh, my rental income, and my business income. What happened was I was well on my way to being a millionaire in, uh, in my 20s. You know, I was working hard. My plan was to be able to, to be a millionaire uh, by the time I was 35 or 40. I was well on my way. About the time I turned uh, like 28, 29, uh, I had a series of events that uh, basically set me back to nothing. The first event that happened was uh, when I was in my 20s, I was very active. I did CrossFit, did martial arts. Uh, I was about 50 pounds lighter than I am now. I was in great shape. Um, but one of my favorite things to do was go for a run every day. Um, one day I went for a run and it was on a local college campus and I was out in a crosswalk crossing the street and this 19 uh, year old girl in a Honda SUV uh, whipped in to where I was to, the, to, to my street where I was in the crosswalk about 40 miles an hour. She whipped in front of another car that had the right of way and she hit me on my left side. And when she hit me, I flew up over top of the SUV and I flew about 25 feet and landed on the sidewalk. When that happened, it, uh, you know, tore my ACL, PCL, and MCL, three of the four ligaments in my knee. Uh, it dislocated my hip, broke my pelvis, dislocated my shoulder, tore my labrum. And I also had some vision loss from getting hit on that side. I, I don't have peripheral vision out of that left eye. And, you know, I, can, I can't see my hand right now. Um, so, you know, that accident, uh, you know, without getting into all the details, uh, that accident, you know, she was, she was in the wrong. I did end up getting a settlement, but North Carolina is like only one of two states that has, still has weird archaic laws, how they do like car insurance and stuff like that, or how they do cases like this, uh, civil cases. Um, and I ended up Settling, getting some money, but it wasn't enough to cover my medical bills. And I ended up probably losing about $100,000 because I wasn't able to work for about six months. Uh, you know, I had all these medical bills that weren't covered by the settlement. And it was just a, a bad situation. So that was uh, my first little ding that kind of knocked me back financially. Uh, luckily, I was in a good position. I still had, I had employees at that time, which was good. They were able to keep working. I still had my low cost of living, so I didn't miss any payments. I didn't do any, miss anything, but it still set me back a good bit financially. Uh, I had another, re I had my knee surgery. I had another shoulder surgery a few years ago. That was the first thing that happened. The next thing that happened was I got married probably about within a year of that. Um, you know, didn't make the best choice, kind of rushed into a marriage. Uh, you know, ended up being a situation where, uh, you know, we dated for a few months and got pregnant with my oldest son which I'm very grateful for, but you know, we weren't, uh, weren't a good fit for each other. While we were married, uh, we did, and while I was going through this car accident, I decided to relocate to Myrtle Beach. But when we were married, we were vacationing in the Myrtle Beach. We lived in the mountains at that time. Uh, we decided that we liked Myrtle Beach and that we wanted to move here. So I proceeded to sell my house and rental property, sell off all my equipment and my business. 
and we decided to move to the area that we're in now. When we moved here, we were having a, you know, we were expecting our small son, uh, you know, our new son, Jackson. Uh, I wanted to find a business that my wife could work at and she could take our son to work and it'd be nice and easy and I was gonna get a job. The business we ended up buying was a frozen yogurt shop uh, that was near a local college down here. Um, you know, we bought it from a young couple uh, that seemed real nice. Uh, the business from all the tax returns, all the P&L statements, all that stuff looked like it was doing okay. It was profiting a couple thousand dollars a month. Um, we took basically everything we had and put it in that business. We didn't have any capital left over because, you know, based on those numbers, we were cutting it thin, but the business was profitable each month. We'd be able to build up some capital and put some money back. Anyway, come to find out the nice young couple that sold us this falsified all the sales and tax records for this business. Uh, the business was in fact losing a couple thousand dollars a month. As soon as we took over, it was obvious, you know, we were losing a lot every month. We sued that couple. They immediately uh, rolled over and, you know, admitted that they had done that. Um, but still, they had no money. Obviously, they were running a business that was losing money. There was nothing to go after. We got a little bit back from them. But the legal fees and all the cost we were incurring to keep that thing open for the next six months, uh, you know, amounted to us losing about 75 grand on that. So that was the second hit. After that, shortly after that, you know, with it, during that same time, basically, you know, a little after that, we ended up divorcing and ended up, you know, having to divide up, you know, the equity in my house that I'd bought. Uh, it was cheaper to do that than have to pay tens of thousands of dollars to go to court to argue that that stuff was mine. Um, so ended up losing there and then we proceeded to fight, you know, uh, an expensive custody battle for custody of my, uh, of my son Jackson. So that was another $75,000 hit and all this happened within about a two year period. You know, basically what happened is that this completely reset me, uh, you know, financially. Um, all the hard work I'd done in my 20s was basically washed away and I had to start over financially. Luckily, I was very smart about things. I kept my expenses low. I've never, you know, probably 18, I've never had a late payment on a credit card, mortgage, anything on my credit. So despite all these catastrophic financial setbacks, you know, at that young age, I was still, you know, able to keep my credit score. I, I didn't miss anything, but it definitely set me back to zero. Um, what I learned from this, uh, these experiences, life is short. Enjoy it along the way. You know, I, uh, while I don't regret how hard I worked in my 20s, uh, a lot of that time, and teens, a lot of that time was spent learning skills that would make me successful later, and I did it with intention. It wasn't because I had to work like that. Uh, at the same time, you know, I did miss out on a lot of stuff. I didn't go out with my friends. I didn't spend a lot of time with some of my family. Uh, you know, I missed a lot of experiences that other people had. So it taught me that, you know, life is short. I need to enjoy it along the way. I need to still work hard towards my goal, but I need to enjoy life at the same time. I need to have that balance because before I had no balance. I worked harder than anybody that I knew. My perspective on work changed. So like I said, you know, what I learned is I basically did all that. And I wouldn't say for nothing, I'm still a valuable experience, but it basically set me back. It's like, hey, I could have uh, I could have enjoyed this, I could have done this, I could have done all that, and I'd still be in the same place financially. Um, so now, like, moving forward, like, hey, slow down a little bit. You know, you could get hit by a car and be dead tomorrow. Uh, you know, all this hard work that you're doing could be for nothing. So slow down, enjoy the important things in life. So then I start, my perspective started to change on work. Like, I started to look at, like, Hey, how can I become successful? Because I still, I'm still very driven. I'm still very ambitious. I still like to work hard. How can I become successful and still own my time? So that brings us to part two, which I'll do in a minute, which is, you know, starting my business and the process that I followed, get myself out of working in the business and working on the business. So if you'll uh, stick around for part two, we'll go into that. Thanks for watching. Thank you.